I have a brand new Danny Masterson prison update for you. Now, real quick, if you didn't catch the last update, I'm going to give you like a one minute recap. Uh, Danny was classified and analyzed at this initial prison. They looked at all his records and information and decided, hey, he should go to this prison to serve out the sentence he was given by the judge. What was that prison? Corcoran Prison in California. Now, I talked about what a notorious and just violent and deadly history this Corcoran prison yard has, including most recently, not long ago, an inmate beheading his cellmate. And that's not even the extent of what he actually did to the body. Uh, but anyways, I also talked about how there is a <laughs> statewide lockdown in California of all jails and prisons because there was a riot, not at Corcoran prison yard, but at a jail. This is just how it works. Uh, a riot popped off, including 200 inmates and corrections officers. One of them got headbutted by a very powerful, influential inmate for, you know, a certain reason. And, and, and long story short, a huge several hundred inmate riot popped off. And so the entire state of California, uh, as far as penitentiaries and, and, you know, Department of Corrections, it's on lockdown. Now, when this lockdown is lifted, I mean, it is scheduled and set in stone already. There is an assassin already chosen to carry out a hit that a certain group of inmates have on Danny Masterson. That was in my previous video. So that's just a quick recap. Who is this group? They're called the GBG, the Gay Boy Gangsters. Uh, might sound a little funny, might give you a couple chuckles. You might be like, oh, is, what are you kidding? Is This is a joke, right? No, it's not. There are plenty of inmates who are homosexual who, you know, just because they are doesn't mean that they're not tough and doesn't mean that they're not going to stand up, show some backbone and get down and dirty if you try them, if you disrespect them, if you try to harm them. And so these people have come together and formed their own pretty strong group, gang, organization, whatever you want to call it, to protect themselves from anybody who wants to do them any harm, disrespect them and, and you know, whatnot. Yeah. They're, they're a force out there in California, and they have a hit. Not only do they have a hit on Danny Masterson, they have chosen the assassin who's on the same yard, Corcoran Prison Yard, as Danny Masterson. And as soon as this lockdown is lifted and everyone's let it back out of their cells, they're supposed to hit Danny Masterson. So now the update is this. I believe four days ago, and bear with me here, I may have to periodically check my notes uh, here is reference to this entire update, but four days ago, Danny was taken to a crisis bed within the facility. That means he is in the medical unit of Corcoran Prison Yard. It's called the CMS, and he's in that unit in a crisis bed. Why is he there? How did he even get there? Because he has threatened to himself. It's as much as I can say. Thanks, YouTube. But that's what he's threatened to do. He's he, he's threatened to do that. All right. So they, they, you know, they have to. If you verbally express that to an officer, even if they feel like you're lying or you have ulterior motives, which we would assume Danny has, they have to do that to protect their own self. They got to they got to bring you to. Somewhere specifically within that yard, you know, it varies from state to state and prison system to prison system. But there, there, there's somewhere to bring these guys once they say and express that type of thing where you're going to be evaluated and observed and analyzed. Right. So that's what he's done. He's in a crisis bed. Now, the assumption here is, is that this was a dumb move by him because it, we believe that he did this after hearing, listen, if you're on a prison yard and someone has a hit out on you, you're going to hear about it. I don't care how slick they are. Like somebody's not going to be able to keep their mouth shut. Word's going to get out. He's probably heard that the GBG has a hit out on him and they're going to get him as soon as this lockdown is lifted. And so it's believed he kind of pulled this maneuver to remove himself from this general population dorm and get into this more controlled, observed, and, you know, which translates to safer area for him to avoid anything happening, right? But this was kind of like, uh, 
you know, it, when from an ex-cons perspective, right? This is kind of a dumb move, or, or or at least even if it's a smart move, it was done too soon because you're doing this while you're still on lockdown, and they have to keep him there. Here's the rules for this: they have to keep them there under observation for ten days. Now, if in during this ten days they don't observe or or, or see or, or hear or come up with any determination that you are legitimately crazy, you are you have severe mental health problems. I mean, you really and we're talking like these doctors know, okay, let me tell you, these doctors know how to talk to an inmate and decipher this is an inmate who like is tr- is doing this for a reason and they're like very calculated in why they're trying to do this and they're very much trying to pretend that they are. And then there's inmates who are actually like this. Kind of the same thing as like when you see people go to trial and they try to claim insanity, you know, they murdered someone and they're like, oh, I'm insane and it doesn't work. That's because the authorities, the experts who are in charge of like figuring that out, they know they've done this a thousand times. They know when someone's full of crap and they know when someone's actually like that. I don't believe Danny's actually like that. And that's probably the determination that they're going to come up with. That's just my assumption and opinion, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe because of all this, he has decided, hey, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. Like be here, here, existing, you know, maybe so. But it's assumed this is because he heard about this hit, right? So let's say they don't. They don't, they don't see anything there. I mean, he was already deemed, as, as my good friend J.D. DeLay, who always keeps me updated on this, and J.D. DeLay has already made a video on this, and, and as he pointed out to me, he was already deemed competent enough to stand trial, right, when he tried to be crazy, you know. And they said, nope, 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 you're good. You can stand trial. You're fine. The fact that that's already happened. You know, I don't think it's very likely that they're going to be like, yeah, you're, you know, because what would happen if they did decide that is he wouldn't go back to the unit he was in. He wouldn't go back into that general population area, that SNY yard, that section, that portion of the Corcoran yard, because that, that, that entire yard is divided into several sections. Um, and he would no longer be in danger, at least immediate danger for whoever this guy is who's supposed to get him. But it's probably not going to work. It's probably not going to work. And they're just going to send you right back. But, you know, you know, you could speculate, hey, listen, Danny, if he can't do anything right, there's one thing he can do is act. He can act. He's an actor. He's a Hollywood actor. Maybe he can pull it off. Didn't work for the trial, but maybe within this prison with whoever knew that he's dealing with, who's in charge of making those determinations, maybe he can pull it off and pretend that he really, he, he's lost it and he is just a danger and a risk to himself and he needs to be moved and not put back to where he's, you know, ultimately in danger of this GBG hitman coming to see him. Right. So that's, that, that, that's, the main update here. That's what he's trying to do. That's what he's trying to pull off. Okay. But here's another thing to keep in mind. Even if this works and he's sent, you know, if it does work, he's going to be sent to like some mental hospital or at, at the minimum, some psychiatric unit within the prison. A lot of people think, and and this even goes back to like murder trials and stuff where the people, again, you know, they try to say, oh, I'm crazy. I can't stand trial. I'm insane. I plead insanity. Dude, (laughs) when you do that, whether that or this, what he's doing in prison, if you win that battle, if you get that desired outcome and you get sent to one of those places, it's literally just as bad, if not worse than being in prison. Let me tell you something. Who wants to be surrounded by these inmates are either sedated beyond belief or like, you know, just packed full of pills, tranquilizers, Thorazine, like they're basically zombies or else you have people losing their minds, actually insane. They're actually crazy. Would you want to spend 30 years of your life surrounded by 
actually insane individuals. You know, I always look at it like if you go up north, you're going to, you know, after a few, you know, five years, you're going to you're going to start getting a little bit of a northern accent. If you go down south, you're going to start saying y'all. And you might just develop a taste for sweet tea. Right. (laughs) If you're surrounded by genuinely insane individuals, 24, 7, 5, 10, 15, 25, 30 years. I would say you're going to start losing it yourself. And that was always, you know, if you don't know, if you're a first time viewer, I've done a decade in prison. That was one thing that scared me more than anything. I was never really scared of getting stabbed or beat up or whatever. You know, let's do it. Let's get it. I was afraid of like losing my mind, losing my sanity, cracking back there. You know, that, that that's what scared me. I want to still be me. When I make it out, when I do come home, I want to still be me. I don't want to. I don't want to lose my mind in there, man. That terrified me, that thought. I can't imagine spending all my time around people who actually have lost it. They actually are insane. And you're there pretending. You have no sane, no competent, no coherent people to talk to for 30 years of your life. Everyone you talk to is out there. That's going to affect you and the person you are and your men, your mental health. That's scary. I'd rather be around. Like, I, I would choose general population. And it's like, hey, if you want to, my advice to Danny, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not Mike Tyson. I'm not, I'm not the UFC heavyweight champ. I'm not the toughest guy in the world by any means. But, you know, I would, I would say this, man, as long as they don't kill you, you'll get through it, brother. Man up. Buck up. You're in prison. You're probably going to have some people run up on you. You might want to start like doing some push-ups, practicing some combinations. I don't know. Get in a couple scuffles, man. Learn how to fight a little bit. Like I know it sucks, but listen, you're there now. This is your life. Like get a little tough, mess somebody up, do something, show them that you're going to do something or you are screwed, man. And you're just going to have to accept that that's kind of like what, you you know, that's kind of the life you got to live. And that's kind of the person you got to be back there. I mean, it really is, man. Do that and you'll find much more like freedom and liberation in doing that. Instead of walking around scared, trying to figure out all the little tactics I can use to get away from people who want to mess me up. Dude, do some push-ups, like, you know, do a couple stretches and like get down, man long as they don't beat you to death. And then if they do, it's like, well, well, then, I mean, I guess you saved yourself 30 years of suffering. You know, I mean, I, it's the mentality I had. It's the mentality a lot of people have. And I, then my advice to Danny is you better adopt it and you better do it soon. Because, I mean, and a, a case in a, in a scenario and a situation that you're in now, as extreme as what it is, A, it caused for, you know, that beckons that extreme of a solution. You're gonna have to get like that, man. You're gonna have to get tough. You're gonna have to start doing something and you might lose 27 fights, man. The first 27 you're in, but like number 28, you'll probably have learned a little something. You might, you know, Hey, things might turn around from there and then you're good. You start winning and now you've actually legitimately become pretty tough and dangerous and and you're going to have a much better time. But I mean, you got to do it, man. Like you're going to have to wake up every day thinking, what can I do to get out of this one? Like it's not going to stop after this GBG, whatever's going on here, any hit you have, that's not going to be the first, you know, it is the first, but it's not going to be the only and last thing that ever comes your way in 30 years in prison. My advice, quit trying to trick the system and outsmart and run around and maneuver all around the danger and just embrace it, brother. And and, and you better just figure it out. And, and you need to get like that because that is your life now. That sucks, but that's what it is. You know, you, that's your life now. That's who you're around. That's your environment. That's the law of the land. That's the name of the game. And you better get good. You better get good at the game. So. There's your update. There's my advice. Take it or leave it.
Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe because every update we get on Danny, I will be uploading and sharing with you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.